Good evening and welcome. Uh, today we've got a privilege to sit down with the Secretary General of the NRM, Richard Todwong. Uh, Secretary General, welcome to this interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let us start off from uh, first question. Mm. In 2021, the President, Jerry Babuta Museveni, bestowed on you the position of Secretary General of the NRM, mm. a position you've held roughly for two and a half years now. Mm. How has it been like? Well, uh, once again, I keep... Uh, appreciating the opportunity that uh, the chairman of the party and the president bestowed upon me. It's not easy for someone to come and uh, be a secretary general of a revolutionary party like NRM. But uh, so far we've managed to one, stabilize the party internally, that there is now peace and harmony and order in the system. We have also reconciled our party members in areas where there were a lot of serious conflicts. And uh, we have continued to move around the countryside to pick this. And of course, always as it's done, midterm is also a period where you do evaluation of manifesto implementation. We have been able to cross-check within the countryside the state at which our manifesto is being implemented by government. Um, among your duties as Secretary General mm. is to maintain the party register. Mm. And I want to you know how is it going? What's the membership like in terms of numbers for the party ever since you took over? We have been having variations. In one of the registration, our membership totaling was to about 22 million people. That's as of when? Uh, that was uh, the first registration during the time of uh, the Right Honorable Amam Babazi. Then later on, when we did this registration, uh, our membership was reported to have been between 16 to 17 million. And then when you remove the voters from it, we came to about 11, 12 million voters. And the National Voter Register has about uh, 18 million voters. And then uh, the party had about 11 million voters. So when we sc you synchronize that, our vote should be above 10 million. But we got about 6 million, meaning there are members of the party who did not vote, as if we were to follow by the register. But again, when we clean this register further, we realize that uh, in some areas, there were duplications of names in some areas. Uh, the local government administrations were not captured. So there were a lot of variations in the system. That's what the, that is the audit we did. And now we have streamlined that. Because again, when you look at uh, the number of villages within NRM, in comparison to the number of villages with the Electoral Commission and the number of villages at the local government, they are different. Yeah. You said you came in, into office uh, after shortly after the elections. Mm. Let us speak about 2021, the elections, mm. where the NIM really lost greatly in the central region to the opposition. Mm. Could you be seeing a new strategy as you in office to get back the central region, back to the NRM? Because in many of these constituencies, uh, emanating from the weak primaries we conducted, many of our candidates went and contested against each other. And it was very common in Buganda. Yes, so you find in a constituency, there are about two or three NRM candidates contesting against one opposition. So definitely we divided our votes internally and we gave opportunity to the opposition to go through. Because if you analyze the number of votes that many of these NRM members were getting, combined, are uh, way over what opposition got. So, but we, because we fractured these votes, we... Uh, we divided our votes and we gave chance to the opposition to win. So it is not a given that uh, opposition should jubilate that they, they won in the centre. We know the mistake was mainly internal and it was caused by the register which was not properly fixed and it translated into uh, the weak uh, primary elections which brought us to the national election which caused us this problem. So what's the new strategy? Well, 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 politics is like a military. <laughs> you don't uh, discuss your strategy in the public. It is still, uh, uh, but we, we, we have studied the dynamics and we are going to fix it. Yes. Let us talk about the whispers which have turned into talk around town. Jeno Mohos Kanerukava, who seems to be vying for the big office in the land. Could it be the, one of the candidates that you want to consider for the party? Personally, I've not heard him say I want to be a president, but there are people who are promoting him. So we, we wait for the right time. If he wishes to be, then he has to offer himself. And if he wants to take NRM as a party, because he's still a serving military officer, and by constitution is not supposed to be 
a member of any political party at the moment. But at the right time, when he retires from the army, he is free to choose a party that he wants to contest in. Which, of course, I believe, he, if he wishes, it will be NRM. I don't think he will go to any other party <laughs> apart from NRM. Let us speak about previously uh, members within the party who have come out to support individuals. For example, your predecessor in 2021, uh, people came out to support Amama Babazi, mm -hmm. and they didn't go unpunished. They were punished by the party. We see members within the party now coming out to support the first time. For mm -hmm. example, I cannot mention names right here because of... Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. going? Are they going to go and punish? Are you going to? Oh, no, you see, there is a lot. Of, by the for those who you might not be knowing, there is a lot of freedom of speech and uh, democracy in NRM. We, we we don't we don't constrict our members to speak in a particular manner. Our members are very free. We actually believe in internal criticism more than even anything else. We have a lot of uh, internal criticisms of the party by party members, and uh, a lot of discussions, a lot of free will to express interest and we allow this because that is how you nurture support of a party and then we don't we don't we don't control them that don't speak about this don't speak about that we risk being dictatorial if that have, that comes that's the honorable um mm. how is the fight against corruption going so far that is a huge task corruption 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 has been a song to everybody but of course when you talk of corruption people think it should only be the work of government to fight corruption the corruption level is higher among public officers compared to another which is true so why are public servants more corrupt is it because they're earning less money or is it because they're living beyond their expenses or is it because they're investing their little earned money in the wrong things that is the analysis I want us to go deeper and to know. Because if imagine you, you're earning money, you borrow money, you do that, but instead of putting it into investment, you're going to buy a vehicle. You're going to rent a, car, a house with, a, with more rooms. You're going to spend money to do things which do not earn you income. Definitely, that person is prone to continue being corrupt because your lifestyle cannot be supported by your income and then you are not gener regenerating that money into business. So it is, it is, it's a bit a complex situation for us. So it is the discussion is a little deeper. We need to go into it deeper than just talking about it. We need to analyze it. But of course, there are also a, a category that cannot now be, com be talked about. That those are just, they are not even corrupt, they are looters. <laughs> now that's, that is in another category. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. It's a pleasure. You again. Sure. That was the Secretary General of uh, the NIM, Richard Todrong. My name is Raymond Tamale for NTV. Mm.